All right, everybody. This is round two of our Instagram live attempt today to have a conversation with Dave McClinton uh, about his show that opens up tomorrow night called Absolute Relativism here at Ivester Contemporary. Uh, let's see if Dave gets back in. Sorry, everybody, for the confusion. Let's see here. There he is. Hey, Dave. I'm going to bring you back in. Let's see. Hey, everybody. Hey, Dave. All right. Now that okay, that looks more like what <laughs> more what I was what I was used to. I, I just assumed that it was just my my issue. I didn't I didn't know it was everybody's issue. There there's always issues with these, but they're worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's start back from the top, just so that everybody has the opportunity to watch along with us. Um, my name's Kevin Ivester. I'm the owner of Ivester Contemporary. This is Dave McClinton. His exhibition, Absolute Relativism, opens up tomorrow night. Um, and Dave, could you just again, real briefly, re uh, introduce you know yourself and how long you've been in Austin and sure, sure. the type of work that you make? Sure. Um, uh, graphic designer by trade. I've been in Austin since 97. Um, uh, coincidentally, syncing up with getting a job at the Chronicle, which really, truly introduced me to, to Austin. Um, and I've been creating artwork for seven years and showing it for five. And this is my second uh, solo show. Awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. Down two. All right. So with the title of the show, Absolute Relativism, what does that refer to? So the, the, the idea of relativism, specifically when you couple it with uh, um, ideas of justice and morality, um, it's, it's a theory that your morality is only really governed by your own personal um, uh, environment or, or culture. So the theory holds that if you and I have two different cultures, two different, two different civilizations, or two different um, ways of living in our communities and our societies, that our moralities might not sync up. Mm -hmm. so, so you could take that to its obvious extreme, right? Um, and it seemed to be that those extremes were being enacted this year in our country where I might think, and it's really ironic when you think about Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter and all that double talk, um, that there was a segment of society that didn't and still doesn't necessarily view my life as valuable or as valuable as other lives. Um, and it feels absolute sometimes. So uh, again, I like wordplay and, and just those two words, just uh, they just go together beautifully for me. And it's a great opportunity. I, I like that. Um, I'd imagine that people will be asking me that question. And, and it was named that way to, to start the question. It was named yeah. that way to force the question and to force the conversation. So um, so yeah, that's the, the, the gist of why it's named that way. Yeah. The conversation of what is moral, what is justice? Yeah. Uh, and, and, how, and how does your view, like how does your station in life affect your relationship with the, the, the theory or the, um, you know, what justice really is. Right. I love that, that title together because absolute and relativism, they're oxymorons really. The yeah. idea of relativism is that everything is relative in time and space and cultures and society. And, yeah. Yeah. To have absolute relativism. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, that's the way a lot of people behave. They, a lot of people behave as though their, their thinking is absolute and mm -hmm. that there's no changing. They, they, they can't change how they feel about something or they're not going to, you know, how their life is viewed or how they view the world is how the world should be governed or run. And that's obviously insane. Yeah. Um, so again, I just, th those words together, um, they're just kind of perfect. People are so sure of themselves. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. And, and I had posted something recently about echo chambers. So there are certain things where I do feel, and this, again, this, so this, so the title gets reflected back at me too, because 
I do feel a certain uh, absolutism about things. So, for instance, um, social justice and how my life has been governed by uh, uh, racial oppression and 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 systemic racism. So, to me, if you're if you're even in doubt about those things in this particular country, then you are diametrically opposed to how I feel about it. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so I'm kind of guilty of what I'm talking about. Um, but also because of my position in the world and in this country and my race and the color of my skin, right. that, that absolutism feels right to me. So yeah, it's, it's very, con it's a very confusing, interesting way to, to, to have the conversation. It It is confusing and interesting and and you <clears throat> might think that you know you're you're against your own thoughts a little bit but to be to to have a, a different view from what you think about this situation in america is to be against you because you are yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah so, and, I'm, and i'm always i'll always like leave the door open for at least somebody to say what they feel about it um even if i know deep down i'm gonna completely disagree with them Right. Um, I, I'd at least like to leave that door open, um, if 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 only to shine a light on um, how they really feel. So the one thing that's happened in the last four years is we have a pretty good idea how people in the world feel about us. Yeah, that was tested. Yeah. <laughs> so so let's turn around and look at your work too. Yeah. And look at the imagery here. So what would you say, how would you describe the subject matter that you're working with? I would say that it's about, um, there's so many things, but we could start at the top of what's fairly obvious, and that's um, uh, what it's like to be a black man in America and how that sort of governs my behavior and my thought and my, how I, how I, um, uh, you know, perceive myself and how I perceive my relationship with the country and with law enforcement, with, you know, you know, interviewing for a job, you know, there's so many things that I read into, um, you know, when I, you know, I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you know how you can see sort of a perceptible, I don't know if this is, you've ever seen this, but I've walked into job interviews and I've, you know, particularly before the internet, before LinkedIn existed, <laughs> Um, and you might listen to me on the phone, you hear my name, and you don't necessarily know my, my ethnicity. Right. But I've, I've had situations where I've walked into a room and I saw the either, I saw the change in their demeanor on their the face. realization. And oh. I saw their shoulders drop a little bit. I remember I drove to a Corpus Christi for a job interview right out of school. And I walked around the corner and I had nothing but great conversations with this person. And when I walked around the corner into his office, I saw him kind of just shrink a little. Hmm. It was so, so subtle. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, eh, well, I'll go to the beach after this, eat some lunch. I'm not getting this job. So, so one of the things about the work is um, it's about, I'm trying to illustrate all the different types of moods and, and uh, emotions that it takes to, sometimes you have to hide them. Sometimes you let them loose. Right. Um, and all, all the different um, modes of thinking and the way we have to behave. Uh, when I say we, I mean um, people of color in general, um, you know, just to sort of get by. Sometimes you want to shine a light on it. Sometimes you just want to hide. Um, and that could change every 20 minutes, depending on what you're doing that day. Um, there's also things of, uh, you know, um, I, I exaggerate facial features a lot because, you know, I want to make a statement about western uh, beauty standards things like that um there's a sense of uh wanting to look past gender and think of uh people of color as a as a monolith only in that notion of code switching and having to you know navigate the world um th that's the only way i think the monolith would be appropriate to to, to talk about um and also, the, there, there are elements that speak to a very specific period 
between the end of slavery and Jim Crow that there's this interesting period there where um, equality seemed possible for just a brief moment. And um, I like to use elements uh, that speak to that particular part of history in the work too. So it's, it's frankly, it's way too much (laughs) to talk about um, in a, in a, in a 15 minute thing. Um, And it's, there's, each piece probably has six or seven different references to six or seven different um, elements of either history or culture or, or how I perceive the world. So um, each piece could be its own, you know, conversation actually. I I agree. I really hope that people do come out to see the show in person, look at the work closely and, and dig into all the detail work, Dave, that, that you've put into this all the textures that you're using, all the text that you're using. I mean, they, each piece has such a deep, uh, you know, history of itself. Um, and, and I think that to, to investigate that period, you know, of, of Jim Crow and, and relate it to, the, to today is, is interesting because right now there's a lot of people in this country that believe, uh, you know, racism is over. Yeah. And there, there, there feels like there's a lot of possibilities out there for what the future could be. And we're at a tipping point. So I yeah. think the show is very important. Yeah, I think that that, that notion is interesting in that um, I, I wonder, do they really think it's over or, or are they over talking about it? They're over or it. Are they over thinking about it? Like, I don't think that they truly believe it's gone. I think they're just, they just don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know... I frankly get it, you know, like, you know, if you, if you want to parse it down to just basic human behavior, would you want to talk about someone you had wronged or, or, or an ex? Would you want to keep talking about that person over and over and over again? Um, it's kind of like what it is. It's like this undealt with emotional scar that no one wants to talk about. No one wants to deal with. Like we've never gone to therapy as a nation over it like and we just keep repeating the same problems it's it's almost like we need couples therapy as a country well we need these conversations yeah we need to look at this type of work together and and i think art is a great conduit for these types of conversations yeah i've had so many great conversations because of the art like I, i've i've spoken to people about race that those conversations never would have happened if we hadn't been standing next to um one of my pieces yeah and they asked they asked me a very pointed question and then we dive in so that just that alone about the art has been fantastic that yeah i think that you give people the the unique opportunity to to feel like they're arriving at this conclusion on their own yeah yeah you know and and they now they have some ownership over seeing the the issues that you're so clearly pointing out i mean this work is so powerful um well it's it's that age-old question of how do how much do i share and how much do i divulge about what's going on in each piece. Um, right. You know, some of them, like the one you're showing right now, if you have a question about that, then right. it's I don't so- know, you know, where are you from? Right. But there are other pieces that have aspects of it that, you know, maybe there is a question, maybe they do want to know. And maybe that, maybe that conversation could shed a bit of light on some things. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it's, it's fun's not the right word, but, um, emotionally satisfying, I think is a good word because a lot of those conversations I've had, I felt good afterward. I felt like I had had some therapy myself for a few minutes um, yeah. when we when we have those conversations. Yeah. Well, I will. Uh, l- like like we mentioned, we're, we're keeping this conversation short. We really want people to come by and see the work in person. Yeah. Uh, stand in front of this work. Have the conversation yourself. Bring somebody who you think needs to look at this work yeah yeah Uh, you know this is this type of work it it's got a function it's got a real function it's got a purpose it's important right now to have these conversations with your family and you know all the people that you know um this show absolute relativism opens up tomorrow night um is there anything else that you want to add dave um, I would say that, yeah, if, if you're feeling any sort of misgivings about coming out for, uh, um, you know, the, the opening, um, certainly this, it's going to be up for 30 days or a little more, right? So yeah. um, there's plenty of time. There's a lot of space, as you can see. 
Um, there's a lot of plenty of space to feel socially distant in there. And um, I think it, it's an actual beautiful space to, to have work in. Like, I'm really happy to be in that, that gallery. I love I love it. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely, man. And um, <laughs> hopefully this isn't the last show I have in there. Um, There'll be more. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I really want people to see this stuff in person. I want them to just stand in front of a piece for several minutes and and take it in. And, um, you know, and also feel free to send me a, an email if you have a question, if I'm not around. So, yeah. Yeah. I like that you brought up that this show is on view until January 9th. So there's plenty yeah, yeah. of time to see it. We are ha having an opening Saturday night. I'm not wearing a mask at the moment so I can have this conversation, but... There's always masks required in this gallery, up to six people at a time. Um, we're, we're, we're keeping things safe first. Um, yeah, yeah. We want people to come out. So if you want to come out, don't want to make the opening, reach out to Dave or I, um, and we'll set something up for you to, to view it in private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It awesome. Just whatever, whatever it takes. I want, to, I want as many eyeballs on the work as possible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, Absolutely. I'm forward to tomorrow night. Yeah, thanks for the wall space, man. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> All right, dude. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.